person sitting in front of me. She got glitter on, she got lashes on, she might go get her driver's license picture taken today because she's feeling herself a little bit. Why am I talking about myself in a third person? What's up y'all? Hello, how are you? How are you doing today? I'm doing peachy. Sir, oh fuck, I forgot to take my thing. That's my bathroom sink. Should I take it out? I'm not gonna take it out, fuck it. I already sat down. I'm already within distance of the camera that I like to be, so I'm not gonna get up and move it because laziness. Sir, because y'all seem to really, really like my what's in my non-designer basic ass bag tag, what's in my purse tag, like the booty gurus like to call it, I decided we're going to do another tag. Let's do another tag. Let's do it. Let's fuck it up, Veronica. We're going to tag it today. So, as I was scrolling through the YouTubes looking for what tag could I possibly do, I came across this tag that was originated by Mel Thompson, um, but I saw it through Abby Williamson. It's a little bit spicy. It's a little bit teeny driven. It is the truthful YouTuber tag. I believe she created this tag in light of all of like the debauchery that went down last year up in the booty community with all of like, I got paid $80,000 to do a sponsorship. Am I telling the truth? Or you know what I'm saying? You remember, you remember, right? I remember, I remember how that shit went down. Okay, so let's just do a tag, girl. Let's do it, here we go. Question number one. Have you ever received a product, tried it, didn't like it, and then decided not to review it. Um, no, because I don't like teen products. <laughs> no, actually, that's a lie. Um, probably like a year or two ago, let me think of stuff that I've received. I could probably count on one hand the amount of items I've received, Veronica. But a couple of years ago, I had received a brush set from Furless Cosmetics. Just they were just like, yo, we like, they were very cool about it. I should have reviewed them. I should have at least like shouted them out because they were very nice and cool about it. They're like, yo, we like your channel. We want to send you some brushes. It was not under the pretense that I would review them. I did not review them. They, you know, haven't contacted me since, obviously. Um, but I, I just thought that that was cool that they weren't like, bitch, where's our review? I had asked you guys on my channel, like, yo, I got these brushes. Do you want me to review them? And I think like two people were like, yeah, fuck it up. So because there were only two people, I was like, oh, they must not really give a fuck. So I didn't do it. But other than that, um, I, I don't think so. I mean, I believe all the things that I've received I've told you guys about, which isn't a lot. People contact me and are like, we want to send you this, like stupid shit that does not pertain to my channel whatsoever. And I usually just ignore it. Y'all know I'm really bad about that. Question number two. Product you use alone, but don't show or use online. I think I mentioned this in like a favorites years and years, years ago. Uh, but it's a heated lash curler. Like, I never talk about it on camera, but normally when I'm done filming, like a get ready with me or doing my, just doing my makeup in general, really, I will go into my bathroom, especially when I'm not wearing lashes. She wearing lashes today, because we may or may not be going to the DMV today, and we got to look very Kardashian up in there. I wonder if they'll let me bring my ring light. Anywho, whenever I'm done, I always go in and use my heated lash curler on my lashes, because it works so fucking well. I definitely suggest buying a heated lash curler because they work, girl. If you know how to use them right and under the right circumstances, oh, they so good. They make your lashes like shoot up to the sky, girl, up to the sky. Question number three. Product you want but won't buy because you don't support the brand. If y'all follow me, then you know I'm just not that deep <laughs> when it comes to social justice anything because if it ain't fucking with my paycheck my family or the way i live my life every day i really don't care that's just how i am you can call me a non-substance ass have an ass bitch all you want but it's just how i feel i feel like it's fucking makeup like it's just makeup it's just makeup girl it's just makeup there are people starving kim like what are we doing here it's just makeup so, I'm sorry the sun's coming out, so if my face disappears, that's why. But with that being said, I will say uh, there is one brand that I won't buy from. It's not because I don't support 
the brand, uh, although I do believe the owner is maybe a little sus. Maybe the people behind that brand are a little sus, and that is Morphe. And the reason is not because I don't support them or like give a fuck about any of that. It's just because it's so overly fucking saturated on YouTube. I, in my heart of hearts, down deep in my soul, feel like I just can't do that to y'all. <laughs> like there are so many fucking people talking about Morphe. And I, I mean, I ain't gonna lie. I have really contemplated at a time or two buying the Jaclyn Hill palette, but I just can't do it, y'all. I just fucking can't. I cannot stand Morphe because of that reason, because it's so overly fucking saturated. We have an entire aisle of Morphe at work now. If y'all know, I work at Ulta and it's like, oh my God, I can't fucking get away from it. It's on YouTube. It's at my job. It's, it's not in my home, but it's, it's fucking everywhere I turn. It's Morphe, 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 Morphe. It's just like, I can't, I can't anymore, girl. Just cut it out. Cut it out. Can we, Jesus, just fucking go already, please. What's your number four? Do you have any blocked words? And when I first read this, like before I watched your video and I read this, I was like, what the fuck does that even mean? What does it mean, blocked words? And then I watched Abby's video and I was like, oh, <laughs> duh. No, I don't. Um, primarily because I don't know how. <laughs> I'm not like super YouTuber-y like most of the YouTubers on YouTube. I kind of just like, put videos up and answer comments and as far as, as, about as far as my YouTube goes, I don't know how to block the words. I can see why people would block certain words because if there's like people spewing out hate speech and stuff like that, that is completely understandable. So maybe in the future when I make it fucking big on YouTube and you know, those trolls or whatever start to start to pile in, maybe I will search it up on YouTube how to do that, but as of now, no, I, I don't. Do you delete comments? If so, why? I have deleted comments. I, I really, I don't delete comments anymore because like, ain't nobody got time for that. Like I really, at this point in my life, don't give a fuck what people think about me. So, you know, put what you want. However, I will say if there are people who are consistently, um, leaving the same comments over like hate comments over and over and over then I will go through and delete them if they say something negatively towards another subscriber of mine or towards like somebody I happen to be mentioning in a video or whatever else then I will delete them I haven't deleted comments in a really really long time um, because I, I, I don't seem to get that much hate comments I mean I do <laughs> Don't get me wrong, there are those assholes that leave comments. Oh, my videos tell me I look like Michael Jackson and stuff. But it doesn't bother me because I don't really care. Most of the time with hate comments, I'm commenting back telling them how unbelievably sad I am for whatever this tumultuous time they're going through in their life that they feel the need to hate on other people. So I, I hope it gets better for you. That's, that's usually what I do with hate comments. Again, if they're attacking someone else, I ain't fucking with it. I just delete them. But, yeah. Number six. Do you block people? Kind of goes with the hate comment thing. I think I've blocked a total of two, maybe three people in my YouTube's entirety. And it was people who were coming on every single video and just, like, leaving random dumb shit. And it was, like, to the point where it's every other comment, like, sometimes two to three comments on one video. So I just went in and blocked them today. And it's been years since I've blocked somebody today. I'm gonna be real honest. Uh, YouTube makes it real hard <laughs> to block somebody. You gotta like go to their channel and like do all other things and stuff. And ain't nobody got time for that, girl. So I don't bother. Again, I usually just leave them real nice comments, which tends to piss them off. And mo more times than not, um, me commenting back with like nice comments, uh, every time they leave a comment, usually in turn makes them stop after a while because they're like, fuck this bitch. I'm gonna go piss somebody else off. Number seven. Have you ever lied about a product to stay on good terms with the brand? No, I, I 
don't understand why, well, I guess I do understand why people do that because with brand trips and things and stuff like that, when this whole, um, I don't know where they went, where did they go? I don't remember where they went, but like BoxyCharm or Pure Minerals or Pure Cosmetics, whatever the fuck they call themselves now, sent all these influencers uh, wherever, Cabo St. Lucas or wherever the fuck they sent them, and then everybody was coming back like, oh my god, this Pure Palette dough, and the palette kind of sucked. I was like, oh, okay, okay, girl. Um, but no, I, I would never do that, because I, I mean, obviously, I do this for fun, not money. And I really don't give a fuck about what brands think. To be real, straight up honest with you guys, like, I couldn't fathom even getting that much PR solely because I cannot stand clutter in my life, as y'all know. I am on the verge of decluttering my entire makeup collection because it's just, like, getting too much. Uh, I, I couldn't even fathom having that much makeup. Like, what the fuck would you do with it? Where would you put it? Why do you have it? You can't possibly use all that. It's insane. I give props to Samantha Ravendahl for like stopping her PR because she came to the realization that it was just insanity. Videos of like other beauty YouTubers that I watch, like vlogs or something like that, when they come home and there's like fucking mounds of packages, I'm like, what? Do you, oh God, I couldn't, I couldn't girl, I couldn't, that would drive me fucking insane. There's no way, no way in how I could do that. I feel like for me eventually, I would literally probably not even open it and just start like throwing it at people. Take it, take it, take it. Number eight. Have you ever initially liked a product when you reviewed it and then changed your mind but didn't let your audience know? There are actually multiple products that I liked when I reviewed them and changed my mind and did not tell you guys being cold. As y'all know, uh, a couple of years ago, I used to be an oily beast. I was all the oily, just very oily. And every product that I had was mattifying. I was very into like mattifying, full coverage, all the coverage, foundations. Oh, and I had really bad acne. So I was into super full coverage, the highest coverage I could get, the most mattifying foundation I could get the most mattifying powder I could get that stayed on the longest because my skin was so oily my foundation would break down during the day and now I'm like dry as the funky Sahara girl so you know what I mean just from that that my taste has like completely changed over the years and I just don't feel the need to tell you like every single solitary product like oh I used to use the Kat Von D Lockett foundation I don't like it anymore because I'm dry like, I, I don't know, I think it's kind of just a given. You know what I mean? Is it, is it a given? Cause now I use completely different, all the stuff. You know what I mean? Just because I'm, I'm dry, I'm not oily no more. So other than that though, no. I, not that I can think of right off the top of my head, but there are times when I will um, use a foundation and be like, oh my God, I love it. And then slowly not like it, but I've never not told you guys when that's happened. I don't think. Oh shit, girl, here come the tea. Number nine. Influencer you don't trust. <laughs> there are uh, so many, <laughs> too many to name, I believe. So do you guys watch Peter Mon? You like Peter Mon? Do you watch him? Um, remember back in the day when he had that like beauty guru song where he used to say, Jeffree Star, Jaclyn Hill, Manny M.U.A., Nikki Tutorials, James Charles. Basically, the, the, the chorus of that song are mainly the people that I don't trust. Let me generalize it a little bit more. So, here's the thing with boat eco gurus and getting paid to do stuff and sponsorships and whatever else. The people, without naming names, the people that I do not trust, and this sounds real fucked up, but I guess it's just because of where I live maybe, or how I live my life maybe, I don't know. I'm not a super crazy materialistic person. And I feel like the people who are the most materialistic are the those who I'm probably not gonna trust. Because I feel like if you are out here 
trying to wear head to toe designer, you're trying to carry like the newest designer bag, you're driving a Tesla, a BMW, Mercedes, and you're like constantly trying to keep up with that, I feel like those are the people that I'm not gonna trust because I feel like the dollar is, is kind of clouding their judgment a little bit because they're trying to keep up with that lifestyle and like maintain that ambiance. Because if the opportunity arises where they're gonna make like said amount of dollars on this particular product that they otherwise may not have given a fuck about, but because they're trying to keep up with that lifestyle, they, they want that money. Um, so they're going to hype it up and, you know, do or say whatever the company wants them to because they want that money because they're trying to lead that lifestyle. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to anybody? Maybe I'm fucked up for saying that, but that's just how I feel. I'm just being honest with you guys. You guys know I'm always like super honest and stuff with you. What you doing back there, baby boy? He's loving his body on the floor. So that that's just how I feel. That's just how I feel. And if you'll notice, the people who are constantly taking pictures with all their designer things and their big lavish houses those are usually the people where you're like mm, mm, I don't know if I can trust you or not number 10 influencer you trust the most I don't know if there's like one in particular that I trust the most but ones that I do trust on a bigger end um, Samantha Ravindall Raw Beauty Christie uh, Kathleen Lights, The Taylor, I really trust her because she doesn't seem to like care. Um, who else? I think that is probably the extent of it. On a smaller scale, which she's not even like that small, but like Jen loves reviews. Um, oh, what's her face? Thrift Thick. Uh, I really trust her reviews. Um, and on an even smaller scale, see what sucks is like you, you really just like don't even know who to trust anymore especially nowadays on youtube because the um consensus would be that you trust smaller youtubers more than like bigger youtubers but at the end of the day like can you still trust the smaller youtubers because i feel like youtubers on a smaller platform just want to get their name out there like so bad and you know want to build their channel up so bad that they are almost willing to do anything because there are tons of smaller YouTubers that I've watched too that are just like, you know, very put on and and very fake about everything because they want so bad to like be YouTube famous and for brands to send them stuff and for brands to shout them out and they want to be that Jaclyn Hill or Nicole Guerrero or you know, Samantha Ravindall, whoever, they want to be like that next person. So it's almost like, can you trust them too? I think what it comes down to is just like time and investing into that person's channel um, over a period of time in order to know if you can trust them or not, um, just by their actions, by the things that they do. Also, uh, always do your own research. Me, nowadays, um, unless it's coming from somebody that I've watched for years and I know I can trust when it comes to products I don't even fucks with like trying to find reviews for stuff anymore but people that aren't haven't been on you like I've been watching fucking YouTube since the days of like Sam and Nick Pixie Woo um, Wayne Goss I mean way back in the back back like 2006 2007 like I've been watching YouTube forever right so I feel like because I've been watching people um, go from a smaller channel to a bigger channel and their actions and the things that they do from going from a smaller channel to a bigger channel, I feel like I have an idea of who I can and can't trust because of that. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. <sighs> I don't know if it makes sense or not, but that's just how I feel. That's how I feel. Number 11. Secret tips or product application you don't show while on camera. I don't think there's any like secret tips or product application. I mean, other than, like I said before, the uh, heated lash curler. Um, before I had done my video about it a couple of months ago, it was like using my foundation with my hands, which isn't anything new, obviously. Uh, other than that, I don't believe there's like, 
I'm like looking around my makeup uh, little thing here like do, is there something that I do that I like don't tell them about but I don't think so other than the heated eyelash curler thing and maybe like using a face mask before I film <laughs> like other than that or not really I usually tell you guys everything I'm doing number 12 Have you ever showed one product but we're actually using another mm, no <laughs> why you would do that I don't know maybe if you had got sponsored to do, I don't know, a foundation or something, you don't like the foundation maybe, I don't know. I mean, that's just under the pretense that people are assholes, but no, there's, no. I, I mean, there's no reason I would do that. I seen Abby say uh, in her video, there are things that she's listed um, different from what she used, like in the click down, solely because she forgot what she used. Totally done that before. Um, also have like listed similar things uh, because I couldn't find what I was using or whatever if I was like actually linking it but no I ain't never done that girl dogs can you wait I'm on number 13 number 13 have you ever not disclosed a sponsorship no because <laughs> I've never done sponsored him <laughs> I would always have I had I ever done sponsorships I would definitely disclose them I've been offered sponsorships but y'all know how I am about that it's just iffy it's just iffy like I I don't know it's I have this weird thing with like brands sending me things and like me doing sponsorships and it's just this weird thing that I have that I seriously need to get over because there's no reason why I should have 31,000 subscribers and only be making a hundred dollars a month that's like asinine and unheard of but it's, I need to figure something out girl number 14 have you ever had a bad interaction with a brand no because I really don't interact with brands <laughs> um I, I trying to think of like you know purchases that I've made where there's been like a bad interaction where maybe I've had to send something back or something like that but now that I can think of now I've never had a bad interaction with a brand I feel like maybe this tag's a little bit more catered to somebody like on a, a larger scale but even at that like do you really think these people are gonna tell you if they actually like oh yeah this one time I totally got sponsored to do this mascara and totally used another one because I didn't like it nobody's gonna tell you that girl number 15 have you ever bandwagoned with other people's thoughts on a particular product yes brainwatching I have totally been a victim of the YouTube brainwashing, of the boot ego world brainwashing, where you feel like, because say there is a particular product and so many people are talking about how fucking good it is and you see in like every channel on your feed, like, oh my God, this product's so good. Let's say before the time of, because as of lately, I've become a lot more acclimated to not doing this. So back in the day before like all this sponsorship and you know people being paid and PR and this and that came out because uh, I've been as I said watching YouTube for a very very long time girl. So back in the day I was super oily. Um, I had acneic skin and say there was oh I don't know a foundation where everybody was like oh my god it's the best foundation ever but it was like a light coverage dewy foundation. I would still go buy that motherfucker and then I would put it on my face and I'd be like, oh, well, this really isn't for me. But because so many people were talking about how good it was, you start to like talk yourself into thinking that you like it too, where you're like starting to make excuses for it. So like you put it on your face and the first day you're like, oh, I don't really like this. And then the second day you put it on, you're like, well, uh, I do like the way it looks for like the first 20 minutes and then you're like well I do like that it has SPF in it well I do like it if I put like seven pumps on well I do like it when I put this powder over top of it so then you just like start to convince yourself that you like it too again I'm, I'm totally like not like this now just because I've I've been on YouTube so long that I'm like I know the jig is up girl if I like it I like it if I don't I don't you know what I mean but that's the problem with YouTube is that these people are so fucking influential that they don't even understand 
the power behind their words and behind their reviews. Do you know what I'm saying? So yes, I have totally bandwagon, not purposely, but unintentionally brainwashy E. Have I done that? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Not on purpose at all. And only up until, you know, the past couple of years. The past couple of years, I've like, again, if I like it, I like it. If I don't, I don't. But I, I've totally convinced myself that I like something I, I totally did not. Coming up on the last one, girl. It's finally the last one. My dogs are probably going to be in here scratching themselves and driving me nuts because they got to go out. But I told them, I only got three more questions. Y'all could wait just a bit. I only got three more questions. Here's Stubby. Like, come on, bitch. Okay. So... Here we go. Number 16. Things other creators do that get on your nerves, girl. Who <laughs> sitter? There is a lot. Uh, first and foremost, fucking Facetune. Facetune is ridiculous. Like, I, okay, here's the thing. I am not opposed to a little bit of smoothing, a little zit taken out here and there busting up some saturation so your makeup looks like real nice and colorful but nowadays with facetune it is so insane it's to the point where people be looking like the people me and my photographer friends used to make fun of how they edited people if that makes sense like back in the day um, I hung out with like this group of photographers and if we did like senior portraits or portraits of each other or whatever and we had this one friend who would literally when she would take a picture of somebody like when she would do senior pictures or something like that would so completely and utterly over edit their facial features it was like <laughs> there was no it was like a blob like this one blurred out blob with these white eyes that like look like they were floating off of their face because they're so white we're like what the fuck is that like that's not even human what are you why do you look like an alien or plastic person and now it's normal it's just is that's fucking face tune and people are like oh my god your skin is so nice like no your skin is not so nice it is completely exaggeratively smoothed over with fucking face tune and snatching in the waist and like the arms and the legs by the time some of these people get done with face tune they're a completely different person they're not even the same person like you see somebody up on the Instagram you're like oh my gosh she's so skinny she looks so good and then you meet her in person and it's like what who the fuck are you are you like her fat twin sister what the fuck happened like why is this a normalcy nowadays not to mention that it makes people create these completely unattainable unachievable goals in their brains like Oh my god I want to look like her I want my waist to be this big and my ass to be this big like no that's not real life like that is not attainable without face tuner fillers like hello it's just insane it drives me fucking nuts like as I and this is why honestly I don't even get on Instagram that much anymore because I'm like it, it just takes me back to the days of when we used to make fun of people for over editing, like bitch, you can see like no texture in your skin. Your eyes look fucking white as like bleach white. They're fucking popping out of your head. I can't stand it when people wipe their eyes and their eyes are like floating on their face. Sometimes I look at it and I'm like, is it moving? What's going on here? It's uh, I can't stand it. I can't. Not disclosing sponsorships. That drives me fucking nuts. Like, if you are who you say you are, you should be okay with disclosing a sponsorship because as you're disclosing it, that, to me, people who are like, hey, this is sponsored, whatever, that makes me trust in them even more. It's the people who are fucking shady about it and who leave it way down at the bottom of their click down where nobody else is probably even going to fucking see it. Those are the people that I feel like you're probably not really standing behind the thing that you're saying you're standing behind if you're trying to hide the fact that you're getting paid to stand behind it. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. So yes, that drives me fucking nuts. Using filters and videos, not just on Instagram, but in videos too. Um, there are tons, tons, thousands, 
maybe in the tens of thousands of beauty gurus who use filters in their videos and you literally can't even tell because I have a photography background for me instantly like I can tell when there's a filter on somebody's face almost immediately a big sign that there's a filter on somebody's face is when you look at their hairline if their hairline where like their face meets their hair is just a little bit blurred there's a filter on their face I cannot stand when people use filters and without disclosing them if you want to say yo there's a fucking face smoother on here so my skin doesn't really look like this in real life fucking a on you you know what I mean but when you're using a filter like a skin filter in a video um it makes and not a lot of people know that that's a thing too that's another thing like not a lot of people know that that is a thing that's able to be done like that people are able to use skin filters in videos um just because like video editing and stuff isn't like as prevalent as what uh picture editing is so it's not that well known that that is a capability that people have and when they use it again it makes people reach for these unrealistic unattainable goals like damn i want my skin to be as smooth as hers when her skin ain't that fucking smooth to begin with that drives me nuts and pretty much goes along with face too dude i could go on forever about what other creators do that get on my nerves forever and ever girl because y'all know i like talking shit but the, I, i'll just do one more I, oh god this one more than anything and i will tell you this right now um, anybody that I have ever come across, if it's a new channel, if it is a recommended in my subscription feed, if somebody gets recommended to me and I click on their channel, the minute I hear their voice, if they got that fucking YouTuber accent, I click off. Like, I cannot, I cannot, girl, with the YouTuber accent. Like, why? Do you have to sound like everybody else? I get it, girl. I get it. When you go to fuck Kentucky and you down there for like two or three months, you all start talk like tug people. You start to pick up people's accents when you're around friends who um, maybe you have a new friend that has like a completely different set of mannerisms than you. You start to pick up their mannerisms. But at the end of the day, when I hear that accent, I feel like you're just trying to be like everybody else. You're trying to like fit the mold to be youtuber famous and i'm not gonna lie i did the fucking accent girl i did it i did the youtuber accent because i thought that's what you had to do like if you were doing makeup on youtube that you had to go up and be like hi guys so today uh, uh, oh god i can't take it i can't take it girl there's even people that i watch that like i really like the content of their videos but they're just so hard to watch for me because they have that accent and it's not just beauty gurus it is youtube across the board it doesn't matter if they are a lifestyle person if they are a diyer it doesn't matter like everybody has that one youtuber accent and you can really tell the people who are like trying to make it on youtube like trying to be youtube famous because nine times out of ten they're gonna have that accent um, and I, I get it. I know how it is. Sometimes it's like very weird to turn the camera on. Like for me, I feel like in my real life, I'm like very quick witted and like very snappy. When the camera turns on, I really have to think about what I say. I don't know why. I don't know why it's like that. It took me a while to like get comfortable with the camera enough to where I can, you know, just talk like this because I really had to think about what I was saying. But, and, and I get that, I get that. When you get in front of the camera, you're like, what is, what? Uh, it's just weird. It's just weird. But eventually, you'll get used to it. But just practice. Like, talk to your friends or, like, practice, you know, making videos of yourself. That's what I did. I would, like, practice what I was saying. Like, um, in videos, like, I would take videos of myself and then not upload them. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, it, it just drives me nuts, dude. It drives me nuts. I guess, like, the best example I could think of is, like, Bunny Myers, like, Graveyard Girl. Her specific accent. And I feel like she's, like, almost the one that even started that accent in the beauty world was Bunny. Because that's, you know, she's very exaggerative. I can't, honestly, I can't think of, like, even anybody else who, um, goes back that far that kind of 
talked like that other than bunny especially in the beauty world but like girl if I hear that accent coming out I will click off your video if you leave a comment on my video and are like hey check out my channel um and I go to your channel I'm not trying to be an asshole but if I go to your channel I hear that accent I click right off like I cannot fucking do it YouTube is entirely oversaturated with the same type of people so in order to make yourself stand out and be different from that you gotta be yourself dude you just have to be yourself I know it's like super cliche that's another thing too is that the thing that sucks about YouTube and this is even going back to this turned into a big giant rant video girl and this is going like all the way back to when I uh, talked about like you don't even know if you can trust smaller youtubers anymore um the thing that fucking sucks about YouTube and like making friends on YouTube, and I don't know why this just popped in my head. I think it's because of the YouTube accent and because people like commenting, check out my channel or whatever. Um, the people that come on your videos and are like, watch my video or check out my channel, no shade to those people. I know you got to get your name out there. And I know how it feels to watch somebody and feel like, wow, I feel like I could really be friends with that person in real life. Like, I feel like we would get along really well. I feel like we have the same interests. We're like the exact same person. Um, the only problem is that just from being burnt in the past, like, People that want you to watch their channel, I feel like because I'm just a paranoid ass bitch, nine times out of 10, they just latch onto you because you have more subscribers than them. Um, because they feel like your subscriber base could then be their subscriber base and maybe they only got 5K but you got 30K and they, they want to get into that because that's what you do. You start off small. I know the mentality of these people because I've watched people do it. They start off small. They start off with smaller YouTubers um, and you know try to get in good with them and then they eventually move up to bigger and bigger YouTubers and it's kind of like this whole social climbing thing. Uh, like Manny MUA totally got clocked for social climbing because that's exactly what he did. He started off with smaller YouTubers and then kind of worked his way up and he's admitted that he did that. That's the crazy thing. Like he's admitted that he's done that. YouTube is like so fucking cutthroat that it's like hard to even um, obtain friendships with other YouTubers because of that. Because you always have that in the back of your head just from being online for so long. You always have that in the back of your head that like is does this person really like me as a person or did they just find my channel and saw how many subscribers I had and decided maybe I could like kick off her. You know what I'm saying? It's so fucked up, dude. Maybe I'm just paranoid ass bitch, but it's just how I feel, which is why I kind of stay like really closed and guarded in YouTube. I don't really talk to a lot of other YouTubers. Um, there were, when I first started out, there were a lot of YouTubers that I talked to and that I would watch their videos. They would watch my videos. We would comment back and forth to each other. Um, there are YouTubers now who are very big uh like 500k plus that would talk to me and watch my videos and comment on my videos and i would watch theirs and comment on theirs who now are no longer subscribed to my channel who like want basically nothing to do with me because they've already made their way up there was a point in time where there's two youtubers in particular two males i won't name names um there was a point in time where i had more subscribers than them so they would like comment on my videos and you know interact with me and stuff and then like once they got over a hundred thousand just totally unsubscribed to my channel and was like oh okay i can make my way now so just because of that experience and because it was like more than one person there are people who i've talked back and forth with we watch each other's videos who have gotten you know over a hundred thousand subscribers and i still talk to and we still watch each other's video and we still interact it's not like we're best fucking friends and like you know at the end of the day we're just like cordial to we're like youtube friends or whatever um but then there's those two people who did that and because of that i'm just like oh i get you now like what the fuck ever and the fucked up thing is is like i still watch them and i still like their videos but I know where they coming from but anyways that uh, 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 let's stop let's not go into it any deeper girl because this video is already long enough because i done had turned this tag video into a motherfucker rant video so 
Um, and I totally, I thought, oh, this would be a cool little toy man video. No, I've been sitting here for like an hour and a half running my fucking chopper. So that is it for my tag. Are there any other tags you guys want to see? Let me know some tags in the clip down. Should I do the YouTube assumptions tag? Should I do that? Should I? If you guys want me to do the YouTuber assumptions tag or whatever, leave your assumptions, um, in the comments of this video and then if I get enough comments in this video then I'll do that video and if I get enough comments with like assumptions or whatever for that tag video I'll also post a picture on Instagram and ask you guys on Instagram too for like assumptions or whatever so that's it it's a little bit tea smell a little bit a little bit hot tea for ya yeah okay so it is outro time so I'm gonna go uh, I'm getting ready to film my concealer declutter next. It's going to be a sad one because y'all know I'm a concealer whore. It's going to be hard for me to get rid of some of these concealers, girl. It's like I got a special place in my heart. Okay, so I got to go. I need to just shut up. So subscribe, <laughs> like, do the things that you do, girl. And I will catch you guys in my next one. Peace. Okay. Excuse me, could you not? Excuse me, could you not?